Welcome back. We're doing a video today on making a T-nut for a quick change tool post upgrade to this Logan 922 lathe. We're, this is gonna be a quick video just showing the machining process of making the T-nut, very simple operations. Um, but I just wanna talk a little bit about kind of the theory, my theory behind T-nuts on, uh, on the lathe. And um, what I like to do is, the, they come most of the time in just a block like this, or they might not come with one at all, and you just have to get a piece of material. But um, I like to have as much engagement as I can. Now, the T-nut, the original lantern or rocker style post that this Logan came with, you can see they don't have a huge engagement. Um, if you put that in there, See, I mean, they, they're not all the way to the, to the edges. It's not super thick or anything like that. It doesn't even have a T-nut. It's just a, a slotted piece. And you could do that, and it would probably work just fine. However, I like to try to beef it up a little bit by having as much engagement as possible to the ends and, you know, have a fairly snug fit here. Nothing that's going to prevent you from moving it or sliding it. But, you know, just have everything in there with extra beef. Uh, because I think that can help just make things more rigid and nice when you're doing it. So what I've done is I've taken a few measurements here, created a crude drawing. And what we're going to do is I found out that I want my T-nut to be an inch and 7 16 wide. Right now, it's 1.872 wide. We want it to end up at 1.437 and a half which is a 434 and a half thousandths difference, but we're taking some off of each side. So we could divide that by two. We're gonna take 217 thousandths off here and 217 thousandths off here. And then when we have our width, what we're gonna do is we wanna create the T-nut aspect of it. And we are going to leave 300 thousandths on the edges and we're gonna step it in a quarter of an inch on each side. And right now, the material is 482 thousandths of an inch. So we need to take away enough to get to 300 thousandths, which turns out to be 182 thousandths off the top, or down and through there. And it's gonna be offset 250 thousandths. So we'll bring our end mill down like this. We'll touch off on the edges. We'll move the end mill in 250 thousandths to a depth of 200, I'm sorry, depth of 182, and then we'll mill out each side, and we'll be left with a nice T-nut that has a good fitment in here. So let's go over to the Bridgeport mill. We're gonna throw this in the vise and start by just knocking material off each side to get us to the desired width. Let's take the 217 thousandths off each side and raise the knee up here till we just touch. This isn't something super critical, otherwise I would use a piece of paper. Okay, I can hear it just barely ticking. And you can see there how it just barely is scratching, not really been cleaning. So we'll set our zero. <clears throat> zero set. I think what we're gonna do so we're gonna take off two 100 thousandths cuts and then a 17. Alrighty. That nice straw color on the chips, which is what you want with a high speed steel tool. If it was carbide, you'd be looking for a nice blue chip. Okay, razor up another hundred.
again. We're getting a little bit of a burr there, but nothing I'm worried about. Pretty difficult. This cutter is only 20,000 or so bigger than the piece. Here over 17. And I found that the three in one cutting oil actually works pretty decent, believe it or not. It's not really a cutting oil, but the only thing is, is it, it is smoky, but it seems to work good as a cutting oil. A lot cheaper than getting Molly D or some of the other cutting oils. Okay. I'm gonna take this out, deburr it, flip it over. We have her flipped over, a little bit of oil on there. I've moved the knee up another hundred. Let's take a cut. Razor up another hundred. Take one finish cut. 17. Okay. Final cut on the whip. You might notice I got the wooden guards on the table. That makes it a lot easier to clean up when I'm done. And I can keep my tools on the wood guards. Always protect your tables. Okay. Step one is finished. So we're set up to touch off on the side here. I would normally, if this was a critical part, I would use an edge finder or a wiggler. But this doesn't really have tolerances that we're worried about. So I'm just going to come in until... I touch the tape. And I'm seeing some of the tape come off now. Okay. See that. You see, it just started to scratch the tape. <clears throat> and I know that the tape is about 5,000. So. What we're gonna do is, set of zeros. I'm gonna move in on the Y. Five, well, okay, six thousands. <clears throat> we know that is now past the tape and onto the part. And I'll move 249 thousandths. Because we wanted 250 thousandths. lock my table on the Y. Now we'll come back here. We're going to touch off off the top of it like we did before. Just until it starts to scratch. That's a little heavier than I wanted, but we'll go down 180 thousandths. We're gonna do a 100 thousandths cut, just like before.
And this time, we're gonna go back through before we raise the knee because I don't wanna be climb milling. I don't want to do that right now. I wanna do conventional milling where the rotation of the cutter is going in this direction. I wanna feed in against the grain, so to speak, so it's not trying to pull itself along as it moves. Let's go to take off 70, and then we'll have a nice light cut for the last one. Maybe we'll climb the way back on the last 12,000th cut. It can leave a little bit of a better finish. It's not something that you really are gonna be targeting if you're using a roughing end mill like this, but we'll just do it so you can see. Okay, and now for the final. We'll actually take 10 because I took a little bit of a heavier touch off cut. So. Let's climb mill our way back. And see now the rotation of the cutter has a tendency to want to pull the work in to the cutter. So you wouldn't want to be taking a heavy cut doing climb milling on a Bridgeport Series 1 machine like this one here. On a lot of CNC machines or something that has ball screws, you don't have to worry so much about that. Okay, so now, because we had set zeros, we can go back up to our zero point that we did before and then come back to the same 80 graduation so that we know that both sides are milled to the same depth. So let's lower the knee, one zero, that was 80,000. So now 100, you always go beyond the line and then come back up to account for backlash. So, I'm seeing a little bit of the chips of the, of the paint, there we go. We know we're just about there. Set a zero. Move over the five. Now let's move 250. Okay, I've moved the cutter back over. I brought it back to the zero point where we skimmed off. I skimmed the top. Remember, we have to feed from the other direction now to avoid the climb milling. And let's go. First 100,000 is coming off. And this cutter is getting dull, leaving a pretty good burr. Kind of just my go-to roughing thing. Okay, let's go back. Let's take off our 70. And then we'll climb mill the last 10. Maybe I'm going to have to do a video showing how to sharpen an end mill. 
tool cutter grinder. Okay, let's go up the last 10. I'm locking the knee when I do this. Always try to keep things locked when I'm in the process of making a cut. So here we go. Now you can see climb milling from the other perspective. And you can feel it in the handle when you're climbing on. You can feel that tendency to want to move the work along. Okay, let's deburr it. So here's it. our very quickly and simply made T-nut. Try it out. I like that. It's nice and smooth, but it doesn't have a ton of gap to pull up, which means that you've just got... To me, it's you've got a good engagement in there. Sometimes I've even made them with the, uh, you see how this is recessed right here? Sometimes I'll make them so that you have the, uh, the meat for the recess so it's always seated down at the bottom but still has the engagement here. I mean, does it, it doesn't really matter, but I like to just kind of overdo things sometimes. But I hope you've watched this, I uh, hope you enjoyed watching the video and I uh, hope it helped you if you're trying to make a teen up for the first time for your lathe. Let me know in the comments other things you'd like to see.